Hi, my name is Nancy Hill. I'm a nurse practitioner student at Auburn University, and today I'm going to cover Nursemaid's Elbow in a five-minute lecture. So, an overview of Nursemaid's Elbow. Nursemaid's Elbow is also known as subluxation of the radial head and also a pulled elbow. It is the dislocation of the radial head. The angular ligament slips between the radius and the ulna, and it's no longer positioned around the radial head. Subluxation of the radial head occurs when the arm is pulled longitudinally with the elbow extended and pronated. Risk factors for nursemaid's elbow include, in infants and children, the radial head is less bulbous than in older children and adults, making it more prone to dislocation. A history of a dislocation makes reoccurrence more likely. This frequently occurs when a young child is lifted by one hand or by the wrist or when the arm is jerked while holding by the hand or wrist. It may occur when attempting to prevent a fall or swinging the child by the hands or wrist. It most often occurs in children that are under the age of five. It's more often in girls than in boys and it more often involves the left arm because most of the time the adult is holding the left hand with their right arm and therefore it occurs in the left arm. If occurrence is in a child over the age of five, it's more likely to involve a fracture. Other risk factors include cerebral palsy, osteogenesis imperfecta, osteochondroma, and fibrous dysplasia. Now, three essential questions that need to be asked when making the diagnosis of nursemaid's elbow include, how did the injury occur? The mechanism of the injury is key to the diagnosis. Anytime a child presents with an orthopedic injury, must find out how the injury occurred. Also, you need to look for and assess for signs of abuse. Number two, has the child used the affected arm since the injury? If the radial head is dislocated, using the affected arm or moving the elbow will cause pain and the child will not want to use that arm or move it. Number three, does the child have a history of an elbow dislocation or other orthopedic injuries? First, if there is a history of a dislocation, it increases the risk of another dislocation occurring. And then secondary, you also again want to assess for any indications of abuse. So is there a history of orthopedic injuries in this child? Nursemaid's elbow key physical exam findings. First, observe the child. Pain occurs if the hand is moved from the pronated position. The child will usually hold the hand in a pronated position against the abdomen. They will not use that hand and they may move the shoulder but they will not move that elbow. The child will cry if that elbow is moved. Second, you wanna palpate over the elbow. It, the child will be tender over the radial head. And then assess the upper extremity for additional injuries, assess for swelling, ecchymosis, brachial and radial pulses, sensation of the extremity, palpate the entire, in, the entire extremity that is injured. A fracture is usually not present with the nursemaid's elbow in children less than five, but if the child's over the age of five, they're more likely to involve a fracture as well. Treatment of nursemaid's elbow. You can give Tylenol for pain. You can also apply ice to the elbow for pain. But the main treatment is a closed reduction, which is manipulation of that joint utilizing the supination flexion technique. First, you, while applying pressure over the radial head, you will supinate the hand and forearm. Second, flex the elbow until a click is felt on the lateral side of the elbow. Third, if resistant to reduction, apply slight longitudinal traction to the forearm while flexing the elbow. And this should result in immediate pain relief and return of full range of motion in that arm and elbow. And you can see in the diagram there in the picture, it kind of shows exactly the supination and the flexion of the arm with the hand behind the elbow. Now, if the patient has a history of a radial head dislocation, you may split the affected arm after the reduction. Otherwise, encourage the child to use the arm. If unable to reduce the dislocation, consider a fracture. Patient parent education, do not lift or pull the child by one hand or arm. Lift the child underneath both arms and do not swing the child by the hands or the arms. The child is at risk of reoccurrence of the dislocation if the hand or arm is pulled. There's a 30% reoccurrence rate. The highest risk is within three to four weeks after the initial dislocation. Also, after reduction, encourage the child to use the affected arm. And this is a list of my references. Thank you.